Just be patient, NFLPA. Don't make any moves. Let the NFL make the first move, and then you start your negotiations. Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, on location in the great state of North Carolina. And with me today on this Top Shelf Tuesday edition, Captain for Life, Will Cotton. Cotton Man, how you doing? Doing great. Golf day, beautiful weather. Let's get it, man. It's in the great state of Maryland. <laughs> the Old Line State, I think that's our nickname. I don't know oh. North Carolina's nickname. But in segment one, they are moving forward cryptically to 18 games in the NFL season. We will talk about it and see uh, how the players should react to this. In segment two, who's leading the flock? We're going to talk about Lamar Jackson and Voluntary workouts, as we like to say. And in segment three, do we really need Caleb Williams on Hard Knocks? Will and I will talk about it. But first, Cotton Man getting ready for 18. The NFL has clearly said they won 18 games. Roger Goodell has put it out in the world. So now we're all talking about it. But Will, I want to talk about the current collective bargained agreement, the CBA. The last CBA was signed in 2020, and it's good through 2030. That's a long time to leave this money on the table. So what could this thing look like, and how should the union handle it? So here's what it will look like. The extra game is known as the 18 plus 2 model. And the calendar, just like in the school system, lends itself very well annually to an 18-game season. So the NFL would begin on Labor Day, one week earlier than it does now. It will introduce a second bye week to all teams, which would mean the Super Bowl would fall on the third Sunday in February, which happens to coincide with President's Day, making the Super Bowl an unofficial federal holiday. Now, there's no shock to why the league wants this will. They want the money. And if you give them 16 more regular season games, that's going to make everybody happy. So should the players rip up the current agreement and move forward How would you advise the players? I think the first CBA was uh, signed on was like 2020, like right before the pandemic. So they really don't understand. Well, not though they don't, but now they do the power of social media, the power of the Internet, things that they can do and get into. Um, I think the NFLPA, they need to. I wouldn't move just yet. You know, at at some point. The NFL is going to come to the NFLPA and say, this is what we want to do. We know that you're going to do it. Don't show your card. Don't show your card. If you show your cards now, you're going to end up with a free lunch. That's about it. (laughs) Maybe some child care. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But they can make some real change if they think about what they want that can, you know, that's actual feasible. And then stand on it. You know, the NFL will definitely sign most of what they sign because they know it's going to be billions and billions of dollars. Um, So I would say just be patient, NFLPA. Don't make any moves. Let the NFL make the first move, and then you start your negotiations. All right. And under that line, if you will, Will, um, the NFLPA has a training camp proposal. So let me share with the fans what – the training camp proposal is all 32 teams have become all have begun off season uh, programming leading to the 2024 season. But if the NFL players association has its way, zero teams will be on the field at this time next year. So the proposal that the players want is to overhaul the off season as soon as 2025 with the elimination of voluntary spring workouts and organized teams team activities, which are known as OTAs, in favor of a longer training camp ramp up with players reporting mid-June to early July. So here's how the current setup works. 
All teams are permitted to begin workouts in April ahead of the draft and host a rookie mini camp in May. And then you have voluntary OTAs this time of year. And then training camp leads to the preseason. And it really doesn't require vets to report until late July at the earliest. A majority of NFL players support this proposed change. The proposal stems from a desire to reduce injuries and maximize recovery time in the off season. So will knowing what the league wants in the future, the players have kind of said something, the things that they want now, what's your response to this? Uh, they should just kept it real and say, OTA is just free. And I, you know, like just keep it real. They don't get paid. You know what I'm saying? That's what they really want to say, you know, and I agree with them. You know what I'm saying? If you're doing anything at work, if you're doing anything that's organized, that's a team activity, not just, hey, let's meet up at a restaurant and talk about things, I need to be compensated. You know, um, sometimes view them as 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 greedy or, you know, which is crazy because they 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 they, they all are feeling for the billionaire. Like, oh, don't that don't give them that. No, no, they don't need it. Why aren't the people on the side of the million? <laughs> it's weird to say, but the people who have less money. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's just about money. To be honest with you, they could change the structure, whatever, whatever. If they said, hey, how about we just pay you during OTA in this kind of stipend, in this kind of way? They're like, oh, that's cool, that's cool, yeah. Hey, I'll work with that. That's rough for me. So I, I think they'll get it done. At the end of the day, it's money. So, I mean, I, we understand that. So. Okay. So with that, in segment two, speaking about OTAs, we're going to talk about Lamar Jackson and did he leave his flock unattended? We'll be right back on the Eye Coaches Podcast. The reviews are in for Dr. Keith Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. College professor and student athlete academic expert Dr. Lisa Rubin said, There is nothing out there like this book, so I do hope people will pay attention and give it a read. Former George Mason standout Fowler and Campbell said, Consider this book an opportunity to work directly with Dr. Adams, just like I did. I assure you that there will be something you can take away that will be useful to you throughout your personal journey. Ryan Waite, a recent college graduate who is a software engineer, said, I like how the book is based on research, which makes it good for general students as well as student athletes. The book serves as both a memoir to Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes over 15 personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues from a variety of sports and endeavors. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Our Coaches Podcast in segment two. Who's leading the flock? Baltimore Ravens continue to practice most of the spring without their most valuable player and Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson has been ab absent for four of the team's first five voluntary organized team activities. Um, Coach John Harbaugh said it's that time of year. It's voluntary. He's not really sweating it. Uh, last week, Jackson was the only absent starter from the Baltimore Ravens offense. And fans, you know Jackson's in the second year of a five-year deal worth $260 million, which included a $72.5 million signer bonus. And last year, he became the youngest two-time MVP. He's a baller. He's a shot caller. Will, as a, the captain for life, do we care that Lamar Jackson is not at voluntary OTA practice? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Let my man Josh Johnson get the reps, and uh, that's that. You know, small, not even nothing to talk about, man. He'll be there. Uh, he loves Ravens. He, you know, nothing really to talk about. They, hey, but, you know, at the same time, you know, they have to make money. They have to have news. They have to have media. They have to kind of get people a little stirred up and ready to go. So, you know, Baltimore, you guys are a good org organization, good media. You guys are funny, <laughs> but nothing to worry about. 
Yes, and point five said the same thing. Hey, who cares? We're fine. But speaking of organizations, it is well documented for fans of the show that you know Will's not the biggest fan of the Buffalo Bills organization. So the Buffalo Bills last week told the world why they traded Stephon Diggs. I'm going to sell Will. Well, I'm going to try to sell Will on what they did. So let's tell you the why behind the what. I always say yesterday's solutions lead to today's problems, and the Buffalo Bills ate more than $31 million to trade Stephon Diggs in the offseason, and this was a record for a non-quarterback. So why didn't they wait until after June 1st uh, to kind of spread out the financial impact? General Manager Brandon Bean explained that Buffalo's reasoning was that they preferred to get out of the albatross of Diggs' contract off the books sooner rather than later. They knew they were going to trade him, and rather than push for financial ramifications, they opted to just let him go. So here's what they got. By dealing digs to the Texans, they swapped draft picks in April. The Bills absorbed $31 million dead cap hit, losing $4 million of 2024 cap space but they offloaded the remainder of the four-year $96 million contract, and they freed up a projected $19 million for 2025. They proceeded to restock um, Josh Allen's receiving core with some lower-cost veterans, including Curtis Samuel and Marquise uh, Valdez-Scanting, as well as the entertaining second-round pick Keon Coleman. Uh, So... The quote is, their receiver's room is like Baskin-Robbins now, Will. They got a lot of flavors. So now, Will, since the explanation has been given, do you still feel the same way about the Buffalo Bills? No, no, no. They're the same. The same old Buffalo Bills, man. First of all, they didn't have to say nothing. Nobody was even asking about Diggs. Nobody even was wondering why. You know, if you're going to give us information like that, and then to tell people that you admittedly make that terrible decision. You know, I think at the end of the day, man, I think it was, you know, addition by subtraction with Diggs, man. I think it just too many voices in the huddle, and it became a distraction, and they couldn't let they couldn't let Josh Allen just play. You know, so, you know, quietly you let Diggs and Gabe Davis away. So that's two voices out. Maybe he plays better. You know, maybe they play better without him. And Keon uh, Keon Coleman, that guy's a dog. I like that kid from Florida State. Very good. Uh, MVS, you know, speed guy. If you really want to get, you know, Josh Allen, you know, arm out there. Um, Curtis Samuel, kind of, you know, uh, uh, Edelman, kind of Wes Welker kind of guy, you know, if you want to say. But they're just, you know, they're just bad. And then you're going to talk about Baskin Robbins. They closed the Baskin Robbins. Isn't that thing closing? <laughs> you know, it's just bad all around. To be honest with you, I don't think he had to should have said nothing. I think he just kept it moving into the season, um, you know, to even make it a an albatross that he did, didn't want to do. But they're doing it by that, you know, by making such a bad uh, mistake, you know. But. We'll see what happens. It, it, you know, if they go out to the Super Bowl, then everyone will say, this was a great idea. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe we did it before. Da, 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 da. So let's see what happens. But, you know, the Buffaloes are going to build just like they always been doing. Uh, looking forward to uh, that preview episode when we do the uh, AFC East. But, fans, when we get back, it's a hard knock life. Chicago will be uh... – part of the uh, HBO series. We'll talk about that in segment three of the Odd Coaches podcast. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in advocating for student athlete, academic and athletic needs. Through academic and athletic enrichment, the CKA Save Project is on the forefront of the issues facing 21st century student athletes. As student athletes continue to struggle to find a better balance between academic and athletic success, the CKA SAVE Project offers academic and athletic services to support student athlete academic success, including academic skills assessment, academic and athletic consulting, academic monitoring, academic and athletic workshops. For more information or to schedule a free consultation, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka 
Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast. And in segment three, it's a hard knock life. The 2024 season is a critical one for the Chicago Bears. And they gonna, they're going to have hard knocks to document their team's initial weeks. The HBO show uh, will feature the Chicago Bears this summer. And, uh, oh, my goodness, let's talk a little bit about this. So they've had three straight losing seasons. They have the number one draft pick, and Caleb likes the spotlight. He was at USC and Oklahoma or wherever else he was. They also brought in a uh, first-round pick. Is this Roma Dunze? I hope I'm pronouncing it right. They also have uh, a coach who's ready to go after it. Will, what do you think? about the Bears being on hard knocks, uh, airing their dirty laundry? Uh, number one, I think HBO does an amazing job of hard knocks. You know, that's no outside the organization. I think it's beautiful cinemata- beautiful cinematography. The story, they always make it, you know, interesting. They're very done well. Uh, the Bears, eh, I mean, it's an easy it's you know it's 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 what they call it fruit on the ground it's easy to grab you know maybe not the best but let me grab it and take something um i don't think a lot of i don't think a lot of teams wanted to be on it um i think part of it kayla williams could have you know nudged it a little bit in terms of hey we should do this hey man i would i would love to do this or you know so uh I, I, i'll i'll check it out i don't really watch it because i just don't really watch it, but I'll check out Caleb and see what's going on. Some other storylines going on, but uh, uh, you know, n- much ado, much ado about nothing. It's not really that interesting to me. Okay, the New York Giants will also be on on July second. Hard Knocks will release the first of a five part series documenting the Giants off season. Uh, as you said, nobody wants to be on this show. <laughs> Teams kind of hate it. Uh, the Dolphins players openly complained upon hearing that they were going to be on the show in 2023. So, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, I'm a fan of boring. Hard Knocks is not boring. So just think if they had a film dust, Will, what would they have seen? Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> not good. good All right. London Bridge uh, is not falling down, but. Let's tell you what London's trying to do. So after 17 years of hosting regular season games, London is hoping to land a Super Bowl. Good luck with that. The mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, revealed this week that he's hoping to convince the NFL to bring a Super Bowl to London. So let's look at the time. One of the issues with bringing a Super Bowl to London is the time difference. London is five hours ahead of the Eastern time zone, which means the game would kick off around 9 p.m. London time to make sense. That would be 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time and 1 p.m. Pacific Time for the West Coast. The last Super Bowl to kick off in the 4 p.m. hour um, was the 49ers over the Bengals and Super Bowl like 16, something like that. Um, of course, it happened to be uh, highly rated because... Everybody was up watching it. Uh, But if time zones weren't an issue, it's still hard for London to get it. Because here's the upcoming schedule, Will. Uh, I believe this is Super Bowl 54 or 59. That's going to be in New Orleans this year. It'll be in Santa Clara next year and Inglewood the following year. So we don't even have a Super Bowl available for bidding until 2028. And that's just going to be kind of hard for them to get. But London will get the Jets and the Vikings this year, the Jaguars and the Bears, and the Patriots and the Jaguars. So, Will, what do you think? Is it possible in the future that the Super Bowl would be an international broadcast location instead of the good old U.S. of A? I I think so. I think they've been flirting with England for so many years. At some point, uh, they're gonna they're gonna try it. I mean, you know, they have the the power. I would say in terms of the popularity and the money flowing right now. That if you have to, you, this is the time to try things. You know, this is the time to see what sticks, what doesn't. You know, if anything doesn't, then you can recover no problem. Uh, so I mean, uh, I love that they try new things, and it may be something outside of my box. That's like I don't, I wouldn't do that. Why would I go to England? They don't even like you know. But 
who knows? They have a ton of fans overseas. Um, they have even, a, you know, it, it's it's a whole open market in terms of the NFL, which could open up a whole NFL Europe kind of thing, you know. Um, so I think it's good that they're trying these things out, man. It's it's cool. Uh, you know, I don't have a problem having a 4 p.m. Super Bowl that's only done at 7. Uh, and again, you know, I can just go to sleep or maybe I'll stay up or, or maybe I'll go out, you know, because it's a holiday now unofficially. So, uh, you know, keep trying things, you know, keep trying things. I'll never get upset at a company who is trying new things um, unless they're just terribly, terribly decisions like don't do that. But, you know, uh, you know, again, I mean, and, and, and again, most of us don't get the option to even go to the Super Bowl. So it doesn't really matter to us. It's not like a like a casual fan who's like, oh, I'm going to go Super Bowl this year. It's very hard to get to. Yeah. All so, right. so for me. Big wrestling fan, WWE, TKO Holdings, UFC, they tend to take the secondary pay-per-views overseas. The pay-per-views between WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, and Royal Rumble, which is known as the Big Four. I think the Super Bowl is a huge entity, and I don't think the NFL is going to give up that entity stateside, I think um, they, they're going to hold on to that, but maybe they'll give up the Pro Bowl or you know you have think a game a week, you know they internationally. They'll they'll provide more international games, but I don't yeah. think they'll give up the Super Bowl. What were you saying, Will? No, I was gonna, I was thinking like they, you know, would they ever give up a playoff game? But you know, they wouldn't do that off yeah. advantage, so no. they would never do that. Yeah. But I I think they'll add international games, and with the second bye week potentially happening you can bookend uh more international games and you can still i mean you can you can get money that way yeah there you go all right so on behalf of my captain for life will cotton i'm dr keith adams say thank you for listening and or watching the i coaches podcast and we'll see you on the sidelines until next time take care the i coaches podcast is sponsored by the cka save project the cka save project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at cka.saveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F R A N C H I Z E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.cka.saveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.